Hello, good people, and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here we learn, we connect, and we grow. For most Power BI users, our experience is mostly with Power BI Desktop, which is fine. Power BI Desktop allows us to get data from many sources. We can shape, transform the data using Power Query, go on to create our data models. In Power BI Desktop, you can create your DAX calculations and then finally your visuals or reports to tell your story. But the challenge comes when you want to make your report accessible to a broader audience. The Power BI Desktop, if you don't have a license particularly, you are limited to sending your report back and forth using emails. There's a lot more in the Power BI service or online. And in this video, I'm going to help you appreciate the architecture and how you can take advantage of it to publish your report to a broader audience, to get updates in your data sets, show up in the online version almost in real time. So if you are game, join me and let's go through this in a few minutes. Okay, so we start off with this sample report. This is a Power BI report on hemodialysis, that is kidney treatment in Ghana, the key numbers. Okay, so we have the population, the number of patients, the number of HD centers, but this is interactive. So I have this interactive map here. So if I go to the Shanti region, this is that's Greater Accra. Okay, so this is a report on Ghana. This is created in Power BI Desktop, but because it's public data, I want to make it accessible to a broader audience, not just probably my boss or my colleagues. So I want to publish this online and then make any person with a link access it and also interact with it. And this is where Power BI service comes in. So beyond creating your reports locally on Power BI Desktop, you have the option to publish. This is the icon to publish. Well, it helps if you have an account. You don't really need to pay for the account. All you need is a work or school account. You can sign up for a trial and this option is available to you. If you get a licensed version too, there are other capabilities that come with it. So I've already signed in and I'm going to proceed and publish this. Okay, so I have to save my changes. Now, this pops up the dialog box I have here. So essentially, I am going to be publishing this to a destination in Power BI servers. The default folder, if you like, is called uh, Workspace. So in the Workspace, you can publish all your reports and then give access to your colleagues or specific people that you want to come into the reports, take the data set and then create some interaction on their own. There are a lot more options here. You can also create custom folders or workspaces. So in my case, I have created Finex Docs. So I'm going to publish this to Finex Docs. I'm going to select this. Now, while it is publishing, there's the option to also manage the mobile layout. So beyond Power BI service, you could also publish to the mobile layout so that on the go, once you download the app, you can access it on your phone and also share in the report as well. My report has been published, as you can see. I have two options. I can open this online or I can even get quick insights at this point. So I'm going to open this online. Now Power BI is part of a broader platform called Microsoft Fabric. So if you go online, you see the Fabric logo. Again, a lot more you can do in here. So let's see what we have. My reports currently shows like this. So on the top, you have options to export, to share, to even publish it in Teams. Okay, you get insights from here. Um, in a previous video, I showed you how to embed your entire Power BI reports in PowerPoint and maintain the interaction. Now, we want to focus on the options and the file. Okay, so over here, I can download the file, manage permission, who gets access and all, and all that. Now, we want to embed this report. This is why we are here. When it comes to embedding reports, you have mainly two options. You generate an embed code that you can put in your website or an HTTPS link that you can also share to the public. So I'm going to choose this option, publish to the web. So I'll click on this. Now, because of the data you'll be sharing, you get this warning. 
okay because it is public data is fine but if it's data for your organization you need to ensure that you've you are putting the right parameters to ensure that your data is protected now when this pops up i have this dialog box so as i said you have two links the first one is the https link that you can copy and directly put in any url or browser and you have access to the report then there is the html option where you can get a iframe and then embed it in your blog or your website so let me show you a sample so this is my blog so if i go in there i can write a little article around this so here is a sample report that i created around this now you realize that over here i can access the report okay so if i embed it in my report this is how it looks like now sometimes when you create your report it takes a while to load depending on what you have in your report so one option is to load what we call a placeholder image which looks like this a static image to welcome your user while the actual report loads in the background now that option is available here so if i go to the dialog box that i had here beyond setting the dimensions for this i can upload what we call the placeholder image right so i can go in here and then load that placeholder image okay now when this comes in you have to copy the code again as i mentioned it is just a welcome screen or page that allows your user to access at least a preview of the report while the real report loads in the background the person can now click on the view interactive content and then it brings him to the main interactive report so let's copy this and then see how this looks like so i'll come here and then paste this directly here and i'll click now as i said this is how it looks like that static image i can go in and then click on interactive content and then i now have access to my report so this one is interactive i can go in here and then just interact with the report now this is all well and good let's now see a situation where we've updated our data from the source and how that will run through all the way to the report that you've just published to the web now back here if i go to find next docs okay which is the workspace that i published this to and i refresh based on the latest entries here so you see that there are two published to the web files okay now the one that has yellow bars in there is the actual report okay and then the one that has dots is the data set that supports the report okay so anytime you publish to power bi service two files are created the online report and the data set that supports it okay now let me take you to powerpoint and then walk you through the architecture properly so over here we have a schema if we have not published our report okay it sits in power bi desktop this is in right now this desktop report would have a data source so in our case we took it using power query from onedrive it helps if you query your data sources from onedrive and sharepoint you have a lot of advantages okay now we published our report and as i mentioned it created two files right the data set that supports it and the online report it is this online report that we published to the web okay so that is what we've gone through in the first part of the video now what we want to do is that we want to create an update in a okay and then see how long it takes to get it to show up in b okay in d and then in e okay now if you appreciate the time lags it helps you know how to manage your updates especially when you have a lot of people using your report so now that you understand this what we are going to do is that that data set that was created when we published is now speaking directly to the data set in onedrive so we make any changes here and we refresh instead of publishing the report again we just have to refresh the data set here it will pick up the online report will pick it up and then our web version also picks it up so let's apply this now as we go through this okay so here is the online report okay 
if I come to my Finex docs, okay, and then I sort based on the time it was refreshed. Now you see the two files that were created. So this is the report and then this is the data set. Okay, now if you just hover, you realize that there's a refresh now and a scheduled refresh. If you don't want to do this manually, you can schedule the refresh on a daily basis, on a monthly or weekly basis, the timing tables out there. Now, let's try something. So this is the original file. Okay, this is the part that has population. I'm going to increase this by 10 million. Okay, so I'm doing this in one drive. Okay, so this will now go up. So by doing this, the population is going to go up by 10 million. I ensure that it has synced properly. Now, let's see if our Power BI desktop version will pick this up and how long it takes. Okay, so it's still 30 million. Now, if I come here, I can confirm that that data source setting, my data source setting, this is connected to my OneDrive. Okay, again, if you want to learn how to do this, there's a previous video, I'll share it here. And you can use this to, to query your OneDrive files. Okay, so the expectation is that once I click refresh, okay, this is going to go up to 40 million. Okay, so it takes a while. Okay, so this has picked up, the 40 million has kicked in. This is almost in real time. So now that the Power BI desktop has picked up, if you want this chain to reflect in the online or web version, ideally, we would have to publish this again. But because our data source is from OneDrive or SharePoint, we can skip this step. Okay, and then come to the data set. Okay, that supports this. As I mentioned, it's already linked to your Power Query. So I can come in here and then use this to refresh directly. So if this refreshes, let's see if the report has picked it up and then we'll come to the web version. So I'll open this and then let's refresh this and then see if we get our 40 million kicking in. Okay, so that's that. So that took a few seconds more than what we had in the Power BI desktop experience. Okay, so this has gone up to 40. Now let's see the web version. So usually the web version takes a while to pick the updates because see a lot of people are interacting with it. You don't know who is slicing what. So because there are a lot of queries sent to the original report, it may take longer than the few seconds we saw in the desktop version and the reports. It's just been under a minute, but because I refresh directly, I can now do a refresh on this and let's see if this also picks it up. So when I refresh, I get my placeholder image. I can now view the interactive content. Okay, with this approach, it shouldn't take more than a minute to get your report updated. Now, usually, if it still doesn't update, one hack that you can use is that in the original HTTPS link that you copied, right? you can create a modified version by adding this surface. Okay, so you can do refresh is equal to one. This forces a refresh within a minute or max a minute so that whatever changes has happened in there would also reflect almost in real time. Okay. So I hope you picked up some few lessons from here. There's a lot more beyond Power BI desktop and hopefully you can take advantage of it to make your reports a bit more accessible to a broader audience. Please practice and add it to your list of Power BI tricks. Thanks so much for joining us. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number will add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.